I, I hope this is working. I'm so sorry for the technical difficulties. I'm just going to confirm that this is working. <laughs> Oh, thank goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry, everyone. So maybe we'll just wait a, like a minute for everyone to join um, because of the delay. Okay, so just one minute. Perfect. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So we're just going to wait. I don't know if anyone's here, but we're going to wait until more people join. Um, I think they're just looking for the link. Okay. Oh, technology. Okay, um, so I'm going to start, and then I guess people can join um, whenever they can. Um, and just at any point, if you have any questions or want me to elaborate on something, um, feel free to drop it into the comments, and I'll, I'll address it. So uh, I just wanted to start by introducing myself. So my name is Rasika Singh, and I'm a third-year medical student at McMaster. Um, so McMaster being a three-year program, that means that I'm in my final year right now. Um, and I currently um, have applied for residency positions in both pediatrics and family medicine. So um, for my undergrad, I went to McMaster for the health sciences program. I ended up doing my thesis in my final year in health economics. So I studied immigrant health professionals and their reintegration into Canadian healthcare. And that inspired me to study more um, like macro systems, health level changes, and I ended up doing my MBA afterwards. So that's a Master of Business Administration. I did that as a full-time two-year program at the University of Toronto's Rotman School of Management. And I also at that time was able to work um, in both the public and private sectors of healthcare. So I worked at Princess Margaret Hospital in their strategy consulting department. And then I also worked at a smaller healthcare consulting company in Toronto. So I found the work um, interesting and it was really uh, challenging, but I didn't really feel connected to patients. And that's when I decided to come to medical school um, at Mac, which is where I'm at now. So that's just a little bit about my academic background. And then if anyone has any questions about that um, or work experience or anything like that, just feel free to ask me or even message me later. Um, okay, so since uh, no one's posted yet, I'll just questions that we had sent to us. And then if someone um, has anything they want to add or ask more about, feel free. So the first question was, um, can you provide some advice on how to make yourself stand out as an applicant? Um, which I think is is truly um, the most important question. Um, and so one piece of advice that I like to share is it's really valuable to have a consistent story or message throughout your application. Um, and so what I mean by this is that you'll often find um, like throughout the different pieces that we're involved in, so whether that's volunteer work, work experience, or 
like the, the subjects we choose to study, there's a common element that seems to um, like integrate all those pieces together. And so it takes a bit of reflecting to kind of figure out what that is that drives you. But for example, for me, I, I really enjoyed peer tutoring. I like to coach soccer. Um, and those sorts of pieces sort of fit together in my interest for pediatrics and um, like working with children and youth in the community. And so, uh, I mean, it's not to say that you have to pick something that you're going to be married to that um, and you have to pursue that specialty, but it just adds um, it just adds a layer to your application that shows that you are quite thoughtful and reflective in your choices and it's pretty evident that you um, have found something that you're passionate about and you try to um, engage in activities that allow you to pursue that passion. And so having like a consistent story or just kind of being able to tie your experiences together with a consistent message, I think that's very strong. Um, and then the other thing I would say um, in terms of how to stand out is that McMaster requires a supplemental application, which I'll talk a little bit about after. But with the supplemental, there are generally questions that are maybe kind of abstract and require you to just provide like a thoughtful answer. There's no right or wrong. And I think to use that opportunity to integrate aspects of your personality and aspects of your like past experiences is a way to stand out. So I'll kind of elaborate more when we talk about the supplemental application, but I guess my takeaway is to use every opportunity you can throughout the application process to integrate pieces of your personality and the story you're trying to sell, right? Um, and then lastly, I think that it's really easy when we're applying to competitive programs to think that we need like research, volunteer work, shadowing a doctor, high grades, and like it's a lot to balance and it's easy to spread yourself too thin. So I, a piece of advice that I've received and I've, and I've seen work for me is as opposed to trying to kind of get your hand into every bucket, pick a few things. So maybe one or two or three things that you're really passionate about and commit to those things for a longer time period. So I think that being involved in a volunteer project or an organization over the four years of your high school can provide a lot more meaning and reflection for you um, as opposed to being involved in like 15 clubs in your final year of high school, if that makes sense. So it just gives you more things to speak to. And like even if the experience wasn't totally positive and it taught you about some things that you don't want in a career, that's also informative and helps shape your story do like an ample amount of time and experiences in um, an engagement to actually speak to it meaningfully and I think that that goes a lot longer than kind of like spreading yourself too thin and being involved in lots of things superficially and not really being able to draw any meaningful experience from. Okay so I'm going to move on to the second question unless someone needs me to stop um, but I don't see uh, that so far. So I'm going to keep going. Um, so the second question is what kind of questions are asked in the supplementary application? Um, so basically the like it's the questions that are asked are quite abstract generally. They're not uh, questions that test your medical or scientific knowledge whatsoever. Um, and they're not generally questions that have like a right or wrong response. So they really do require you to um, put a lot of thought into them and um, try and spin it in a way um, or provide a perspective that's unique to you. Um, and I know that's very vague, but it's hard to um, it's hard to explain uh, without giving an example. And I'm not sure I'm allowed to give an example because of non-disclosure. But <laughs> generally, the questions are like um, just kind of your thoughts or your perspectives on an issue or um, a hypothetical scenario so like they're very um, they're very um, unstructured and I think that it's a great opportunity for you to stand out as an applicant so having um, been in McMaster's Health Sciences program a lot of the fourth year students volunteer to read and grade applications to the program and so um, having been a part of that process I could say that a lot of the answers that scored quite highly um, were the ones that not only answered the question but found a way to bring in aspects of their story into the question. So the question may not direct, directly ask you um, about a personal experience that relates to the question, but if you can answer the question they're asking you and somehow find a way to throw in an example or um, how this question relates to your life in some way, 
then I think that it just adds like a flair of individuality and helps me as someone who's evaluating these questions remember that oh there's a person behind this answer there's a real person and start to like form what that person is like and what their personality is like and that's a lot more memorable and it's um it's generally like a, a more easier and fun essay to read so a lot of those ones would score a lot higher um so yeah i just wrote some i wrote some tips so there's no right or wrong answer um that being said there are red flags that I think are more common sense based to try and avoid. So um, with that, I like to say that humor is pretty subjective. So it's a little bit difficult sometimes if you have like more of a dry or sarcastic uh, sense of humor to incorporate that into an essay and have an assessor read it without having ever met you or really get the tone with what you're trying to convey. So I would say like, if you choose to use humor, which is which is a great way to stand out. Um, just be careful. Have it read over by people who don't maybe don't know you as well and see how they take it. That would be my advice. But then also just other red flags are just kind of things that are just blatantly like illegal or unethical or unprofessional. Um, those would be things to avoid. So outside of that, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, and then I just talked about integrating kind of your personality throughout. Have it edited or looked at by different people. I think that that's really helpful um, to get a different perspective. Like for me, I had my parents read it and I thought that um, that was a good way to get out of my head and see if my train of thought was making sense to someone else. Um, I talked about how they don't test any medical knowledge um, and they are, again, a great opportunity to stand out. You do have um, to answer the question, but there's room there to expand um, and use personal examples. So I have a question here. What can be done to increase someone's chances of getting in? Okay, so um, I had on my list also, so I'm just going to go to where that is. Okay. So uh, one of the main tips, which I'm sure you've heard before, though, is to have like a well-rounded application as best as you can. So as you guys know, McMaster Health Sciences has a pretty high cutoff for GPA. Um, and I do like to stress that because GPA is a really quick way for programs to sort through applications. And unfortunately, um, even if you're involved in really great extracurriculars um, and have a pretty good balance, if your GPA falls well below the mark, it's a pretty sure thing that it won't get considered. And um, that would be really unfortunate. So this kind of goes back to my first point about trying not to spread yourself too thin and really um, pick things that you're passionate about to speak to, but at the same time, make sure that you're on top of your academics because that's very important. Um, so to get back to your question, uh, what can increase someone's chances? So. Um, I talked about like being involved in things that you're passionate about and trying to build that well-rounded application. I think that another thing um, that's really simple, it would seem, is avoid any careless errors on your application. So that's like spell check, grammar, um, repeating and uh, repeating a thought or, or entering something wrong online on um, the OUAC form. So just like really careful about any simple errors. Um, and then you need to make sure that you spend a lot of time and thought into your supplemental essays. So I think that um, MD Consultants actually offers a lot of services in terms of having people proofread your essays and kind of work with you on your application. Um, that's one great avenue. Another way is to just have like parents, family, and friends read through your essays because I think that um, the essays are graded by multiple people and they really do carry a lot of weight in terms of um, like application review. So um, really really spending a lot of time and thought into your essays. Um, yeah, so I think I think those would be my top pieces of advice is how to stand out. So like having that consistent message and integrating it throughout different pieces of your application, um, avoiding simple errors, avoiding red flags, um, and then spending a lot of time on your supplemental essays and using whatever resources you have available to you to, to use those essays to stand out. I hope that answers that question. If it doesn't, you could just repost it and I'll try and um, elaborate. So, um, okay, the other question we had was, um, yeah, like again, it's kind of related. What is your top advice that you can give to ap hopeful applicants of the program? And so my top advice is really bringing your personality into all elements of the application. Um, and I think that in order to do that, it does take a lot of reflection about the program and about how you fit with the program. Okay. I see another question. I'll just finish this thought. So um, in terms of 
in terms of um, the McMaster Health Sciences program, I think it's worthwhile to either speak to people in the program or research the program. Um, I'll share my insights of the program right now also, um, and then try and really integrate that with how you fit with that program. So for example, McMaster is a lot of uh, group-based learning. So a lot of our classes, you spend um, a significant proportion of time working in groups. So, I mean, there's pros and cons, but they really, this type of group work really helps develop your skills with communication, with teamwork, um, but also with like managing conflict and different personalities. Um, the other thing about McMaster is it really prides itself on self-directed learning. So while there is a lot of teamwork, there's also courses that are kind of um, charted out by you, the individual learner, um, and you kind of check in with your supervisors and work together towards kind of like negotiating the course of the semester. So that requires a lot of maturity and a lot of accountability on your part and it requires a student that's willing to do that and doesn't really prefer the more didactic traditional style of learning where someone just tells you these are the assignments, this is the rubric, because um, it's, it's not like that at Mac, <laughs> at Mac Health Sec. So kind of like understanding those unique pieces of the McMaster program and really um, really resonating on how that fits with your personality um, and integrating that in your application will, will help a lot shows that you know what the program's about and you know you put a lot of thought into why it's important for you. Um, okay, so let me answer this question. So other than McMaster Health Sci, what other undergraduate programs are helpful in securing a seat in medical school? So, um, right, so I'm gonna speak to McMaster's medical school at least admits um, a large variety of students from what we'd say non-traditional backgrounds. Um, and that's so anything from a sociology, um, arts degree, um, there are science students, law students, political science students, so there's a wide range. Um, but if you're specifically asking about other science undergraduate programs in Canada that are good, they're, they're all pretty good. Um, the ones that I was considering when I was at your stage was um, McMaster's Life Sciences program or McMaster's Arts and Sciences program. And then I also looked at Western and they have a biomedical science program. Um, I also looked at York and they have um, a science program and also a kinesiology program that's really strong. Um, and then obviously uh, there's also the University of Toronto that has their own life sciences program. Um, really any Canadian university has a strong science program to be quite honest, um, if that's what you're interested in. Uh, but that's not to say that you have to pursue a science undergrad to get into medical school. Um, it will just help you, of course, if you like science, to learn more about it, but also to help you with the foundations for once you start medical school, because there's kind of like an assumed requisite knowledge that you need to have when you get into med school. And if you don't, if you never studied science beyond high school, it can be a very steep learning curve. It's not impossible, but it can be quite difficult. So I hope that answers your question. And so I mentioned a couple programs that I was considering and um, some good ones. And then, and then it's not to say the other schools don't have good programs. Like I said, like Queens, Ottawa, they all have great undergraduate science programs. So they're usually called either health science or life science. And they're, they're generally the same curriculum. Okay, so um, another question was just kind of like why I chose health sciences at Mac. And I think that... Um, so for me, like, it was not just the strength and quality of the program. So the unique attributes of the program that I spoke to earlier were definitely a draw for me, but there were other things I was considering. So for me, having my family live in Aurora, um, going to school in Hamilton is only about an hour, an hour, 15 minute commute. And um, I didn't commute, like I lived on campus, but I had the opportunity to go home as frequently as I wanted. And that was important to me. Um, I also liked the city. Um, that's a big consideration for me. I mean, given that you're going to be living there for the three to four years um, of your life, it's it's nice to live in a place where you could see yourself being comfortable and having fun. Um, and then I also was not sure if I would pursue medicine, but always interested in health care and health science. So it was a really strong program for me, given all those benefits. Um, and then finally, like for me, the main decision was between McMaster and Western, actually. Um, Western because they have biomed sci and you can combine that with an Ivy business degree and as you know from my background I've always kind of liked science and business so so the Western route was my um, 
second choice, I guess. But I, I didn't end up pursuing that because um, my older brother went to Western and I think that I just wanted to do something separate, um, having grown up and gone to the same school with him for years. I mean, I love him, but I think it was time for me to kind of like forge my own path and see if I could do it. So anyways, I guess that just goes show that a lot of personal reasons that go into choosing a program besides like the aspects of the program but ultimately you want to make sure that it's for you and those are just some of the considerations that I had um, I was asked about kind of the the fav my favorite part and least favorite part about the program and so I can just go through that quickly um, my favorite part about being a McMaster's program was the flexibility it had in terms of like self-directed learning I don't think I was exposed to that in high school at all, like most of us probably aren't. Um, and so it was quite intimidating at first, but coming out of that program um, in the four years, I felt like I had a much better uh, strength in self-awareness and reflecting, um, not just in my academic life, but personally and professionally as well. I think that by being challenged to design your own courses and negotiate your grades and um, yeah, like chart out your curriculum, it really forces you to understand yourself, what you need from a course, how you learn, how you work with others. And that's, that's a different way of thinking that I don't think a lot of undergraduate programs challenge you in. So I really enjoyed that. Um, and um, my least favorite part of McMaster Health Sciences, I like to call like the rat race, <laughs> because I feel like a lot of um, McMaster Health Science undergrads are medical school hopefuls. And, and that's great. But not everyone is. And I think for me at that stage, I wasn't sure if I was myself. And so um, being around students that all kind of have that one goal in mind and have that mentality of working towards that, it can be difficult as you're trying to figure out what you want to not get kind of herded down that path. So I, I found that that was a bit difficult and trickier to navigate. There are a lot of supports and resources in the program, people you can speak to, like career counselors and academic advisors that help you sort through that. Um, and then I also found it helpful to have friends that were outside of the program, and um, like that also helped me like keep my balance and um, keep myself in check. Um, and then I think the last question I have here is, do you feel that graduating from the program gave you an advantage for getting into medical school? Um, so I. I feel like um, it's important to say that there's no formal advantage that's like advertised or posted anywhere. But from my experience, a large proportion of my medical school class at McMaster did do their undergraduate degree at McMaster. So, um, and a lot of them did it in McMaster Health Sciences. Um, so it's kind of hard to not notice that there definitely seems to be some sort of um, preference perhaps of uh, McMaster students completing their training at McMaster um, but again I would disclose that that's not something that the university posts or advertises and that's definitely like through word of mouth but I can definitely um, say from my experience that that seems to be the case at least at McMaster. Um, whether that helped me specifically or not I'm not sure I think that I applied a little bit later in life as a mature student after having worked and um, tried a different career. I think ultimately that helped me the most by giving me the most informed perspective as to why I wanted medicine. But um, yeah, to answer the question as bluntly as I can, that's generally the pattern we see. Um, okay, so those are all the questions that um, we were sent in advance and I'm not seeing any other questions being posted. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that MD Consultants has a lot of great services for uh, students that are hopeful of getting into the McMaster Health Sciences program, such as help with your supplemental applications and reviewing your um, entire application in general. So that's definitely a great resource. Um, you can go to the website or call um, or message any of the consultants directly and they can um, set you up with uh, the, the package that you're interested in. Um, I guess I'll just keep this on for a couple minutes and see if anyone has questions, but other than that, thanks so much for tuning in. <laughs> um, let me just check what's on here.
I'm not seeing any other questions. Okay. I think that, yeah, I think that that covers it. So I guess in summary, my, my best tip is to like really reflect on the aspects of the program that you're drawn to and make sure it's the right fit for you. Um, and then um, try to integrate kind of the consistent story that you have about yourself and your experiences throughout different parts of your application. So in the application itself, um, in the supplemental uh, questions as best as you can. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think that that would pretty much hold you in good stead to having a strong, genuine application. Um, okay, thanks. Bye, guys.